Joining us in the studio for more about babies' amazing abilities is Professor Angela Friderizzi, who heads the Max Planck Institute for Human Cognitive and Brain Sciences in Leipzig. Now, welcome and thank you for joining us here at Tomorrow Today. Uh, your research focuses on babies and how they acquire language. How soon does this process actually start? Well, it starts very early. Actually, we can see already in the early cries of uh, infants that they obviously have perceived the different mother tongues. That is, for example, German versus French, because the cries of these babies at the age of two days is different. How do you know uh, that they have uh, acquired or they are already starting to learn language if they haven't started to speak yet? Well, the interesting thing is that uh, French and German are very different in the intonation of patterns. So German has uh, the stress in a two-syllable word on the first syllable and French has it on the second one. So mama, papa versus maman, papa. And so when we look at the intonational curves of the cries, they look accordingly. And, and what about measuring those language abilities in babies before they speak? What methods do you use? Well, later on, I mean, already by the age of two months, you can use uh, the event-related brain potential that is putting those electrodes on the head of the infant. And then you present different stimuli and you see sort of how they react. So, for example, you can show that by the age of four months, mm -hmm. the infants can learn already words to go with the particular object they have seen. Already at four months, it's amazing. Now, you've done a really interesting experiment uh, with young babies and exposing them to Italian. Can you tell us a little bit about this uh, project that you did? This uh, project was interesting in so far that uh, one either sort of said, well, language syntax, that is the grammar of a language, comes all very late, that is by the age of two years. However, what we could show is that uh, those young infants at the age of four months were able to acquire the relation, a grammatical relation, between an auxiliary and a verb ending. For example, like in English, is running. So okay. after run, you have the ing in order to sort of make this correct. So we were presenting um, correct uh, sentences to those infants for um, three and four and five minutes. And they never had Italian before. They never had Italian before. And then they, you know, listened to correct and incorrect sentences. And uh, they showed us in their brain waves that they are able to distinguish the correct ones from the incorrect ones. It's actually fascinating. Now, what about bilingual children? How did they manage to learn two languages where another child will just learn one? And is it a process that's quite slow or is it as fast as a child that would learn one language? Well, uh, the two languages, I mean, the best situation is uh, when the child has a communication partner in one language, say mother in one language and the father in the other language. So then the child will never mix up the languages. When you talk about sort of, does that take more time? It does only take more time in the sense that you have to learn more words because, you know, you are into two languages. So it takes a bit more time to learn the amount of number of words. But when you sort of count those together from, say, English and German, it's the same amount than an other child that only, you know, has one language, has learned in the same time. So they're at a distinct advantage straight away in life. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon here at the, and in tomorrow today. Thank you. Thank you.